Hi, I'm Paul Pickin. Hi, I'm Ian Pickin. Hi, I'm Sean Pickin. And you're listening to the Dynasty Hot Seat. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this fucking car crash. This is the Dynasty Hot Seat. We've got all the Pickens with us today. We've got Paul, Ian, and Sean Pickin all in to do a very special Dynasty Startup Craft. Paul, you've been on the show loads before. How are you doing, mate? Good to see you. Uh, I'm doing really do well, mate. It was so nice to um, have a rocking session with you to the music again. Um, <coughs> And it's, it's, it's good to be back on the hot seat. Yeah, good. Thanks to that, Sean, immediately slurping right into your microphone as well. Real. Like, great, great for everything. Sean, how are you doing, mate? Good to have you on the show. I'm good, mate. I'm really good. I, to be honest, when it came up with the music, I was like, I just hope I get back to the, the, the screen of us all, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And we've also got Ian Pickett as well on the show. Ian, how are you doing? Good to see you, mate. Good, good. I'm doing good. Thank you for having us. Welcome to the Picking Boys. That's all I can say. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this one for a while. This is going to be this is going to be a hell of a lot of fun. And guys, I don't, I don't, I don't know who's what kind of reprobate is joining us today. But if you're if you're here and you're watching, please hit that like and that subscribe button. If you want to hit that bell, go ahead and do that as well. We're going to do a dynasty start up draft. If you're looking for rookie content, we might. We might squeeze in a little bit of some rookie content as well. So so stay tuned for for that. We're just going to get get right involved. We're going to pull up the, the sleeper app right away. We're going to dive right into it. The picking boys, they've already chosen where they're going to pick. They've got pick number three for Ian. We've got pick number six for Sean. And Paul has taken pick number 12. I'm going to go ahead. I'll just take, I'll take pick number one. Why not? Let's do that. And we're nice. going to get the, the, we're going to get the draft started right uh when hopefully all will go really really smoothly so i've got a five minute timer on boys so don't take longer than that i'm sure that you won't stop. don't sleep on a sleeper don't sleep on sleeper exactly i gotta start off by picking the greatest quarterback of all time <laughs> patrick mahomes the second for me he's in a tier with with josh allen all up there at the top if you want to take josh allen ahead of him i'm not mad of it i am mad at it Team number two, that computer taking Joe Burrow with two, though. Just leaving an absolute storming value for you there, Ian. You must be loving that. I am a fan favorite of uh, of Josh Allen for sure. He has st steered me right quite a few times. Yeah, and look at that. CJ Stroud. All Stroud at five. I yeah, I, could, I quite like the idea of Stroud there. <clears throat> I do, but how's he going to do season two? I mean, he was let fly in season one. He was just left to his own devices and just enjoy the just enjoy the ride, right? So season two, there's going to be a lot more pressure, a lot more expectation. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Sean, were you even thinking about taking him at at pick six? I, I'm a big Stroud fan. I like Stroud. I would have I would have been quite happy because I'm looking QB here, and it's just like you know. I, looking at Hertz or Herbert, I take Stroud over both of them. Mm. But I will take big Justin Herbert because I think he's awesome. He's got a cannon of an arm. Yeah, I really like Justin Herbert as well. Jalen, it's really interesting to see Jalen Hurts was going like 1-1 one, one this time last year, Paul, and now he's sitting at 1-7, at right? That's crazy. Oh, mate, if I seen Jalen Hurts on the board at 1-7 and I was one twelve, I'd be doing what I can to move up to go and get Jalen Hurts at 1-7. Jalen Hurts is a top three pick for me. I, I Overrated. love Jalen Overrated. Hurts. Overrated. <laughs> yeah. If, if, he wouldn't even be starting quarterback next, next season, mate. After, after next season, he won't even be there. If, if you say so. <laughs> well, well, that's not a really good argument, Paul. It's <laughs> 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 not a great argument. We don't understand what you're saying. But, mate, he's just taken Justin Herbert over Jalen Hurts. What? There is. There is no way that is even a, a, a smart pick, you know? Justin Herbert is a Herbert's franchise crap. QB. He's crap. 
Jalen. Well, at least you're no. using your words, Paul. <laughs> He's crap. Look, Justin Herbert's got Jim Harbaugh as his new coach. He's going to let him throw the ball at least yeah. four times, all right? So, yeah. So, Just we'll, think we'll, of the we'll sign see. stealing and all of the info he's already got on all of the other teams. He'll be, yeah, man, he's going to fly this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Paul, you're on the clock. you got about three and a half minutes left. What are you thinking here? You, it is super flex, obviously. you got two picks in a row. Are you going to hammer quarterback here, go one-two punch, or what are you thinking? Yeah, easily, easily. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for Anthony Richardson. Not. <laughs> what, what, what were you gonna say, Sean? Do you, do you I was gonna say you're not gonna take Jalen Hurts, are you? <laughs> 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 no, you're right. I'm not gonna take Jalen Hurts. Um, but, but I am, I am gonna take um, a guy that I was quite high on last year, and I got slated a lot on uh, X for taking him above Trevor Lawrence, and everyone called me crazy. But I'm also gonna go for Dak Prescott. <clears throat> Ooh, okay. Dak is like the ultimate quarterback too, right, Paul? No, he's a quarterback one, mate. I, I for he's he's like the no. ultimate quarterback too for me. I'm I'm not happy if Dak is my quarterback one. I know he's finished give, like give high end, back. but I'm not I'm not delighted about having him as Matt, my I'd first say quarterback. What? This what did he finish this year? Quarterback four, five? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. But you know I mean? pairing with C D Lamb. Oh, oh nice. dream. That is, that is quite Paul, nice. Paul, the inner Cowboys fan. Yeah, but, I'll take but, it, mate. but Paul doesn't like Jalen Hurts, but like that Prescott. <laughs> They're the same person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have you ever seen them in the room together? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I, may as well, I may as well support the Cowboys. They're still a team that are never going to win the Super Bowl, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sean, we're we're back onto you here with four minutes on the clock. You've already got Justin Herbert, so who yeah. Next, I'm. Uh, oh, do you know what? I really like Garrett Wilson here, but then I just worry about obviously that QB coming back around again. So do I double up? Do I? Mm. I think you can't pass on Garrett Wilson. How good he is! So I take Garrett. All right, Ian, we are back to you now in the second round. You got Josh Allen. Where are you going next? Ah, uh, man, I can't let Tyreek Hill pass me here, even though there's some decent QBs. I can s- still come back around at 303. So I take in Tyreek. Tyreek Hill, any, any concerns? He's saying he's retiring next year and going to become a porn star. Right? Mm. Man, yeah, I mean, he keeps knocking birds up, right? He keeps getting people pregnant, but I think that uh, he will best be back. Best yeah, best yeah, he's gonna get, he's gonna get paid. He's, uh, I've got no fear. Yeah, I think, I think he, he could end up coming back as well. He might, or it wouldn't shock me if he's like, I'm retired, and then a couple of weeks in the season, he's like, yeah. actually. I quite fancy this Yeah, very Tom Brady esque. It'll, ju- it'll just be a, a, a media sort of push. It'll get a bigger contract to be happy. He's, yeah. he's yeah. going to retire, become a porn <laughs> star, have one bad ride in a taxi, and not like it. Yeah. The thing is, you're not a great player until you've announced your retirement at least three, maybe four times. That is true. That is true. Uh, you I'm see not this week. Uh, sorry, go on ahead. Uh, I was going to say, you see this week that Tom Brady ran a faster 40 yard dash yeah. than he did at what? No was he 40 way. yards better than he did at 20 years old? Good on him. He's coming back. Yeah. He's, he's, Mahomes has him quaking in his boots. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of torn here. I, I have got back to back Rashi picks, Rice, so, yeah? I mean, Rashi Rice is you know, Super Bowl winning. Rashi <laughs> Rice is a really good player, obviously. But. Um, I'm looking up here. I can see Kyler Murray here, who I obviously do, do like. Justin Fields. Uh, Justin Fields out of Chicago interests me a hell of a lot more than Justin Fields in Chicago. So that could be an interesting, interesting. one. Tell me who I really like here. Jordan Love, I think, came on yes. really, really strong towards the back end of the year. So I think that might be where I go with my first pick, actually. I think I would take Jordan Love over these guys. Not not 10 times out of 10, but, but quite a lot of the time. So... So let me lock in Jordan Love as my second quarterback. And then I want to go to the wide receiver. Well, I can see Chris Olave there. For me, he stands out in a sort of a tier ahead of these guys like Ayuk and Collins, although they are close, along with Smith and Pittman, who I really like. But I think Chris Olave has that potential to to crack into that upper tier with with guys like Amon Rossi and Brown. So I'm going to go 
Jordan Love and Chris Olave and send it right back to you, Ian. What do you think? Sam Laporta goes at number from team two. Interesting. Team two's balling out, isn't it, man? Mm-hmm. This is not um, tight end premium either. It's not set up to be a premium league. He's, he'd probably go even no. higher if it was. I mean, he's the, probably one of the only decent tight ends in a good scheme. So, for tight ends. So, um, I, it's too early, but I don't hate it. Yeah. Um, so, here I'm going to roll with Justin Fields in Chicago. Yeah. I agree. I don't particularly like it, but he uses legs. He's always going to put up points. Out of that scheme, in a better scheme, he can be an even better player. Um, I, I kind of I believe in him. I believed in him last year. I thought they've, you know, they just failed again, and they're one one all the time. But yeah, Justin feels my pick there. Yeah, I think that's really good value getting them there to pair up with with Josh Allen and Tyreek Hill. It's looking like a hell of a good team so far, Ian. And Sean, we're, we're back to you. Who are you going to pair up with Justin Herbert and Garrett Wilson? Yeah, I'm pretty happy because obviously there's three solid QBs come back around there for me after taking a little yeah. uh, punt. So I think Kyler is one hell of a player. He can throw the ball everywhere you need to. We know he can do it on the on the ground with his feet when he does his little like <coughs> schoolboy run, like <laughs> dashing through. But yeah, so for me, I take Kyler all day because who doesn't love the Cardinals, right? Isn't that right, Paul? Yeah, mate, <laughs> I couldn't have put it any better myself, but I'm just really glad you took him because I didn't want him landing here to me and I'd be like, oh, crap, now we're going to take Kyler. you got to take three quarterbacks in a row. And then yeah, you might as well not? take him one after that as well. But you're you're back in the board. you got Anthony Richardson and Dak Prescott lined up, Paul. What are you thinking next? Uh, so now I'm going to smash wide receivers. Nice. Um, and one stands out for me above the others and this is a guy that i kind of fell in love with this year and i actually i believe it was you talking sean that me. i that i traded yeah, with talking about me i oh. traded tyree kill um what was it tank della the first for tyree tank kill, Della the first for tyree yeah so so yeah, yeah so i'm 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 very very much a big fan of Ty, uh, tank Dell, and i would love him to be the wide receiver one in my team. Um, so no, you're going to call your your team fanboys because this is like Paul picking fanboy team at the moment. I mean, Anthony Richardson, Dak Prescott, Tank Dell. These are your these are your boys. No, I'm not going to call it fanboy team. I'm going to call it the championship winning team. Oh, I doubt <laughs> it. Now it's a Rondell Moore goes at four. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ron Del Moore. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> um, and then, and then for me, I. Uh, Does Tank Dell not worry though? If he'd be a wide receiver one, like he's quite a small guy, you know, he's gonna get hurt, he's gonna get injured, like he did this season. Like, he's amazing, but he's small. Yeah, he is. He is small, but he's he's already done it. He's already shown that. Oh, don't he get me wrong. Do I just wouldn't want him as my wide receiver one. Two, perfect. No, no. I'm t- I'm torn here. I'm torn. Do I follow my heart? Talk us through it, Paul. Yeah, let's Tell let's us. do it. Let's do it. So, so uh, I'm I'm a big believer that you you need you need an elite tight end. Okay. Now, yep. playing on a two year basis, if you're playing on a two year basis, I think this guy still gives you big upside, a big value uh, for at least. And, and and that is that is Taylor Swift's boyfriend. I can't remember his name. Um, Kyle Pitts. Yeah. Taylor Swift. Kyle no, Pitt. so for me, for me, it's 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 Travis Kelsey. I think people people are just so they're so out on him because he had a down year. Yeah, that's him. There's him, Kelsey. That's, yeah, that's a, a down year. Down year as tight end number one in points per game. By the way. Yeah, exactly. A down year that's still that's better that's than everybody else. And it's That's still it. compar- comparable to a wide receiver and the points he puts up from a fancy value. He His down year is still better than everyone else. It just might not be as many points as he's got in years before. Yeah. So, yeah. so one thing that I really don't understand, okay? So going into this season, um, or this season, let's look at the season as a whole. T- Travis Kelsey didn't have a season as good as what he's done in the past, but he was still tight end one on points per game. Uh, was it tight end two overall? 
I think it was overall on points. And the uh, Chiefs, something like that. The Chiefs had a down year. The Chiefs had a down year this year. Went and won the Super Bowl. Travis Kelsey still finished as a top two tight end. And all of a sudden, we've gone in twelve months. We've gone from taking t- Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey was going in the second round last year. <coughs> he was that high up, you know. People were, were all in on Travis Kelsey, and now all of a sudden. They've had a down year, and everyone's like, "Yeah, I don't want. I want Trey McBride, and I want Sam Laporta." Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey for me. Say again. How old is Travis Kelsey now? I, I think know, he's like thirty-two, 30 something 30. like that. Maybe thirty. He is. He is. I think he might be the oldest player on the Chiefs team, which shows you how young that team is. Really. <laughs> yeah. uh, two things about two things about Kelsey, though. One, if you took his playoff performances in the NFL season and like kind of. Put, I know it's like circumstances, yeah. but put that into the season, the 17 week season, it would have been the greatest tight end performance of all time. So, the last recency like that we've seen of him in the playoffs, it would have been the greatest fantasy performance of a tight end of all time. And also in the Super Bowl, Travis Kelsey <coughs> was the fastest sprint he has ever recorded. So, respect. he's not slowing down. He's no, it does help that no one can catch, uh, no one else catches on, on the Chiefs team. I mean, yeah. It does it does limit your options of where you're going to throw it? Yeah. Absolutely agree, but hopefully we'll address that in, in the draft and become back to back to back. So anyway, Sean, uh, we've kind of skipped over it. You've got you've got two minutes forty left, so you got a bit of time. Yeah. You've got uh, Herbert and Garrett Wilson and Kyler Murray. Where are you going next? I'll go wide receiver again here because I love wide receiver, like you know, young, like big, strong wide receiver. So like Drake London to me here is all day and there's obviously there's rumors about justin fields potentially going to the falcons and i think if you get someone like fields there or some of these good rookies to pair up with someone like Greg london i think we're laughing perfect and ian we're back to you now you've got josh allen tyree kill and justin fields off to, off to a great start where do you think about going next that's a big bodied Wide receiver still out there uh, from Seattle, um, and I'm not going to pass him here and stay with Metcalf. DK Metcalf coming in. Do you think Tyler Lockett? He's looking like he might be might be out the door. Do you think that's going to help out DK Metcalf, or is the JSN inevitability mm-hmm. coming for him? Yeah, I think I think Lockett will be. It is you know done a little bit. It's just because JSN is he got better as that season went on last year. Um, he didn't put up big numbers, but I wasn't expecting to. I think Metcalf will still be number one there for a while, but JSN is is the future there. Yeah, I think I think you're definitely right, and that's actually where I'm kind of leaning here. I'm sort of torn between JSN, Addison, and, and Flowers, all all of whom I I really <coughs> do quite like. So I do like to get some young receivers. I not, still believe not a fan in, in of the T Higgins. I do I do really like T Higgins as well. Just got um, the franchise tag, didn't he? But because they're kind of in the same tier as me, so guys like Higgins and Addison and Flowers and JSN, <coughs> in a draft like this, I'll usually just take the younger guy, like just just because they get an extra couple of years. And I know T Higgins isn't old by any anything, but I think I usually will decide on on the side of youth. Rashi Rice is there, obviously. I don't think he's quite up there with a JSN, but he's getting close for sure. So. I'm going to lock in Jackson Smith and Jigba as my next pick to pair up with Chris Olave. And then after that, I'm kind of like you, Paul. I think I do like to get an elite tight end in there. And the guy that's going to be the consensus tight end number <laughs> one Kincaid. this time next year is Dalton Kincaid. Oh, so man, you need to I'm going to I'm gonna take Dalton Kincaid a little bit earlier than most people would think. But Josh Allen... Is going to have Dalton Kincaid as his number one weapon next year at Buffalo, and that is going to do amazing things for Dalton Kincaid. I cannot wait to see what he does. Had a really strong rookie year, outshone by Sam Laporta's historic one. But look out, Dalton Kincaid, tight end one this time next year. Just wait and see. It's not right, Paul. Oh, Mags, mate. <laughs> Do you know what? Do you know what? <laughs> what what's bad, you, Paul? What's what's bad here? What's what's what, what don't you like? It's Dalton Kincaid has done nothing to prove that he could go in this position. You know what I mean? He's 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 not he's 
to me, you've taken him in round five. There's a lot of players still on this board that I'd rather over Dalton Kincaid. But Mags's love for Dalton Kincaid has come through. I suppose that I had this same love for Kyler Murray. You know what I mean? And people were like, ah, you take Kyler Murray way too early. Or Dwayne McBride, you know? Um, but yes. but your, your love for Dalton Kincaid, I reckon you could have still got Dalton Kincaid 7-1. Nah, because someone you would have taken him at 6-1. You would have just taken him off me to annoy me. So that's No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't I've already got Kelsey, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to you, mate. He would, mate. He would. But Mags, your, I, um, love, your love for Dalton Kincaid is getting a bit, bit, you know, it's getting a bit much now. Do you need an intervention? I am openly acknowledging I have taken him too early here, but I also wanted to make sure I took him, so I got to speak about him, of course. So, so that that is my last pick there. So, Ian, we're back to you. Who are you following up DK Metcalf with? And um, so, seeing what the running back room looks like after it passes me here is a bit. By the time it gets back, is going to potentially really ropey. Um, so I'm a, a decent season ish. Um, got youth on his side. I'm taking James Cook here. Um, when I look at rook, the rookie draft that's coming up, uh, doesn't fill me with much confidence for the running back. Fills me with more confidence for the wide receiver. Hence taking that older wide receiver at this point. Um, so yeah, James Cook for me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like that pick there with James Cook. He's shown that he can kind of do it over there in Buffalo. I'd be shocked if they bring in another running back to compete with him. I think he's shown that he can take that that workload. So I think that's a really nice running back pick there. And, Sean, we're, we're back to you. Who are you taking after Drake London? Oh, I really do need to go for a running back here. But there's nothing that sort of jumps out at me. A lot of old running yeah. backs, isn't it, around here? Like... You know, who doesn't love Saquon Barkley, but... Back in the day. Back yeah. in the day where you were trading up for him or selling yeah. the farm for him. He was, like, out of college, he was one of my absolute all-time yeah. favourite players. Pretty sure I won a fantasy league on the back of his rookie season. Could be a cowboy. That could be fun. That could be fun, to be fair. That could be fun. I'm sure Paul will pick him later. Yeah. <laughs> not, 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 not if you're Tony Pollard, you know. I mean, Tony Pollard could be an XFL player this time next year. So, I mean, we're. <laughs> um, I'm going to just take the best player that I think is on the board, and that is Zay Flowers. I think he's just too good to pass on right here. Yeah, Love Zay Flowers. Zay Flowers is the guy. Who realistically, if I was doing this draft for actual, like for money, that's who I would have taken instead of Dalton. Yeah. Like that's a, and it'll annoy you. It's a good pick. And it'll annoy you, Ian, because, you know. Didn't get Not really, because I could have picked him. So it doesn't annoy me to know that he's, he was never coming back. <laughs> true. Yeah. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah he was never going to come back. And Paul, you're you're back in the board. You got two picks in a row again. What are you thinking in this in this love in for all your favorite players, Paul? Who's next on the, on the pick and love list? Um, there's nobody I love here, to be honest. <laughs> well, Bryce, mate, Bryce Young just got sniped from you in by Team Eleven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, all awful. over that. What an awful pick. Um, I feel like this is a pretty horrible especially when they, <laughs> look at the other QBs that are still there and took <laughs> Bryce Young. Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like this is a pretty awful spot in the draft. Everyone here seems to be quite old in terms of, of where they are in their career. And yeah. I feel like y y you'd have to look at your team now. I know I've gone for a young wide receiver and an old tight end, so I'm a bit mixed bag. But this, to me, is where if you're in a win now position, these rounds are key for you. But if you're Ooh. trying to build a dynasty team, this is where I'd probably be looking at moving back and then gaining some picks a bit later on and getting some younger players, yeah. like, you know? <clears throat> but... We obviously the twelve. The twelve position is so good for trading back as well because you could trade your five twelve, still knowing you have the next pick as well. I think it's really nice to trade from there. Yeah, yeah. But um, but no, for me, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna double down on on wide receivers. Um, <clears throat> one is uh, Dero Samuel from the 49ers. I think he's yeah he's always a threat in many different positions and he's a man. Is. That, <laughs> that 49ers <laughs> team, you can't, you can't presume that. Um, uh, that 49ers team is 
um, it, it is elite, and it's and it is going to be they're going to yeah. be competitive all year, aren't they? So I'm yeah. going to go um, Debo Samuel, and I'm torn with my next one between four different players. Ooh, mm. I'm going to go. Tell us, Paul. Tell us. I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Cooper Cup. Oh, no. You're the only three? I'm not going to go with Cooper Cup. I'm going to go with Stefan Diggs. <laughs> oh. Cooper Cup, Stefan Diggs. Will the other two, like, in their 70s? or? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't yeah. want to take players here at the at the end of their career. I'll take Cooper <laughs> Cup. <laughs> this is what I'm saying to you. This is what I'm saying. I mean, it's either Stefan Diggs or Calvin Johnson. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But what I'm saying to you is I wouldn't make these picks. I'd move back out of these picks because yeah, I wouldn't want to make them because I don't want to reach for other yeah. players. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a lot of players I could reach for, but I don't want to reach for them because they'll fall back to me in the next round. Stefan Diggs is a real interesting one this year because I either think he's going to have a resurgence or he's going to go full Kenny Galladay, and I can't figure out what. It's the resurgence. Oh, he's got a pick of as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's the research. Devontae Adams, though, that would have been a nice pick too, actually. Was Devontae Adams on your once as well, Paul? He would have been a nice a nice choice in there, I think, right? Yeah, but I'm just not sure about Vegas, and I'm not sure about who's going to yeah. be throwing the ball. And there's a lot of question marks there, and I just don't want that question mark and that headache. Yeah. 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 At least, at really least if points. Stefan Diggs stops having a bitch fit, he'll have Josh Allen yeah. throwing him the ball, you know? Well, he'll be there. Second read, but you know, uh, Sean, we're we're back, we're back, yeah, we're back to you now. After we're... James Cook, after James Cook, obviously. <laughs> Sean, where where are you going next? You're you're building quite a nice core of of wide receivers here, Sean. You've got yeah, I got, flowers on London and Wilson. Yeah, yeah, but I got to start looking at running back, haven't I? But I feel like it is just a reach for any of these running backs. Yeah, yeah. You could be Team Eleven, who's got Bijan, Jonathan Taylor, and Saquon Barkley, yeah, uh, and yeah. Bryce Young, and mm-hmm. Bryce Young. Yeah. <laughs> Tajay Spears could be like the ultimate risk reward, couldn't it? Right here, I like it. Yeah, I quite like it. I'm looking at possibly Ramondre. I didn't realize Ramondre Stevenson is 26. Yeah, that's he's all the way down there. It could be yeah, interesting that's... with the new new coaches, though, right? With Ramondre, yeah. I'm going to take the risk because why not? And I like a bit of Tajay Spears because we know it's his backfield, hey, don't we? It's, it's, his, it's his backfield if Derek Henry yeah. goes, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think if, if Tajay Spears is on the board and I could see just two picks before Alvin Kamara went off the board, I'm taking Tajay Spears nine and a half times out of ten over Alvin Kamara. So I think that's, yeah. that's a really good pick, especially considering someone like Kamara has come off the board. Even like Saquon Barkley, that's a real conversation for me. Is it Tajay Spears or is it Saquon Barkley? I, I I would I would pick Spears in some cases. I would pick Barkley in others. So yeah, I think that's a really good value there, Sean. You've done done a good job of that pick for sure. And Ian, we're we're back to you. You've got your running back. You've got James Cook. Are you sticking with running backs or or what you think? No. Um. And the only reason I went running back there was I wanted a little bit of youth in yeah. in what a team I had. Um. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have gone. And you, you can see from from what's gone after that, Barkley, Kamara, Swift, um, yep. Spears, a bit different, and then Jacobs. They've got they've got another year left in them before they break. Um, so no, my uh, I mean, tight end is really really messy, really messy, um, and probably only Kittle that's left. Plenty still wide receiver, but as Paul said, a bit of bit of aging. But I'm going to take George Kittle here. Um, more necessity than 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 a than a pick I'd like to make. Yeah, Kittle is like sort of the last of your like quote unquote like elite elite guys. But I'm kind of in agreement with. I've, I've got with one more. Ha- in there. With Han Han Roland sort of says she's almost like done with George Kittle. <coughs> I'm, I'm not quite that extreme, but. He goes like two points, 30 points, one point, mm. 20 points. Like he's very up and down. So I would like him to get more, more consistency, but he's a real, a real weapon to throw in for a win now team as well. He can, like, if you're pushing for that kind of championship, George Kittle can win new weeks, which is what you, you really want. So I'm not, I'm not mad at it at all. There's a couple of tight ends in there that I might be 
swinging by later on as well. Here, I'm on the boards. Uh, see, this is what I'm tempted. I do have two quarterbacks, but I love the value of Jared Goff here, so I'm going to find it really hard to turn that down. I think he's still a really, really solid player, so I'm probably going to take him with one of my picks here. The other one, hmm, I'll probably end up going back to the wide receiver. Well, uh, I've just seen Paul's next pick as well, scrolling down there. Uh, so we've got Mike Evans and Chris Godwin is there, along with Christian Kirk and Amari Cooper, who all of them I'm kind of considering. I think I'm going to go Jared Goff. Definitely. I think that value is great in the sixth round for him. Like mm-hmm. that's that's tough. Tough. Christian Watson is there. Like if someone, if you're in a league right now and you have Jared Goff and someone offers you Christian Watson for him, you're declining that trade. So to get him here after Christian Watson, I'm I'm really pleased. <coughs> the next one I'm gonna go. I'm uh, I'm gonna go Chris Godwin. I do understand that he's gonna be moving back into the slot for the Bucks, which I think will be really good for his fantasy production. So we'll go with Godwin. He's a little bit younger than Evans, even though Evans the better receiver overall, but. He's only got a couple of years left, so I'm going to go Godwin there. I think I've done all right with that. And Ian, we're back to you. Yeah, I like in a bit of, uh, I mean, it's going to be a whole system change here, but a bit of scary, yeah. Terry. Man. Terry McLaurin, he's a, he's a real weird one because mm. he, was, he was always somebody that was being overdrafted. His ADP was almost higher than where he finished. And then, for whatever reason, the second he finished higher than his ADP, his ADP plummeted. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it makes no sense. So I think he's always a really good value. They'll He'll probably be catching passes from either Caleb Williams if they trade up or, or Drake May next year. So That's why, that's why he, you know, different coaching staff hitting reset, a new, new QB, a QB that's going to need a lot of coaching, but a QB nonetheless with a, a elite pass catcher to do that. Yeah, I like it there. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a really nice pick there. And John, we're we're back to you. You managed to get Taj. Are you sticking running back? Are you going back to your wide receiver? Well, what are you thinking? Well, I was gonna take Scary Terry. That was uh, my plan. So I've yeah, I've, I quite like. I do like Ramondre Stevenson. I'm a big fan of him. So it's probably leaning that way. Because there's a lot of dead wood around here now, isn't there? Yeah. I like Javante Williams, but he just didn't seem himself, you know, and that injury that he took before has definitely set him right back. So. Oh, Paul, yeah. I've just seen your pick has been sniped. Sniped, I was bro. Sniped. I- Seen, I seen Brian Robinson, and I thought that's Paul's <laughs> next pick. It definitely was that, wasn't. Yeah, was that not Brian Robinson? No, it wasn't Brian Robinson. Who no, was it? It wasn't. It Kirk. wasn't. So um, you're right, Sean. It was Kirk. Um, I spoke about this on the the Rewind podcast. Uh, I think that QB twos played a massive part in in anyone's championship team this year we saw jared goff we saw jordan love brock purdy um baker mayfield all of these finished in the top 12 qbs this year they were all qb2s and everything like that and i, and I said one of my strategies going into this year is to try and be at the front of that qb2 run yeah and seeing you go for goff yeah it's probably it's probably forced me into this into this pick um, and it has made me try and pull the, pull the trigger. Um, are, are you but, about to say Avada Kedavra, Paul? Um, <laughs> the boy who uh, left. <laughs> I'm to die. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Paul's so ashamed of us right now. He who shall not be named. Yeah, it yes. is. God, dude. No, we're, ash- we're ashamed of you now, Paul. I'll wow. take it. You've been ashamed of me all my life, so what's the point? So now, you- right? <laughs> so Sean Watson, king of the Cruciatus curse himself. Yeah, yeah. Who are you going after? Huh? <laughs> um, I thought you were going to say the Spelliamus one, but there we are. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I'm I'm also going to. Um, I feel like some of my one of my wide receivers is a bit risky, so I, I'm going to try and take another risk with another wide receiver and hope that one of them pays off. And we're going to go over to to Pittsburgh, where I think there could be a lot of changes Ooh. this year. So we're going to get Deontay Johnson in this. Very nice. I can tell you, one of the changes is no wide receiver is going to be catching any passes with their new offensive coordinator. So that's going to be real. <laughs> Did they really catch him before? Well, well, I mean, yeah, yes, it's, that's it's, true. Probably, the problem point. is what what um, the Dementor does because um, that's what that's what we've called him. He sucks the happiness out of you, you know. Um, <laughs> what he does is anyone that you think is really good. He's going to suck it out of them. So I just hope that he doesn't think Deontay Johnson's any good because he'll, you know, he'll hopefully give him the ball. Yeah. All right, Sean, we're, we're back to you. You've got your two running backs in a row with Tajay and Ramondre. Moving away from the running backs now and on to something else. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take a wide receiver here because there's one player that I do really like. I've always been a big fan of him. And it is Cortland Sutton for the Broncos. The guy can just catch anything. So... I just think he's one hell of a player with, I don't know if Russ will be throwing those passes, but someone will. And wh- whoever throws them, he will catch them. So I take Colin here. Yeah, Colin yeah, took a huge step up from I mean, looking pretty awful in, in the last year. Yeah. He, he really took a step up. And yeah, some of the catches that he made, really, really impressive. He's got a bit of work to do to round out his game in other areas for sure, but if you're a new quarterback coming in and you need to throw someone in the end zone, he seems a really good Yeah, player, big, sure big that. target, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, Cortland's got a nice pick there. It's David and Joku. And, and Aaron Jones, one of my sneaky picks for this year. Oh, Aaron Jones, good, good pick for this year. He's got more juice left in him for sure. Ian, were you thinking but, about Aaron Jones there before he got sniped yeah, off you? Yeah, a little bit for sure. But, you know, I didn't think Team Four would go running back, running back, running back, <laughs> running back. Um <laughs> Even True. for the, you know, even the way the computer is working, I didn't think it'd go four running backs. Uh, yeah, I like a bit of Aaron Jones there. Um, good value. Um, I like what you guys, the thought process behind Jared Goff and Sean Watson. I mean, having that additional person in at uh, QB and flexing them in and out when when they're struggling. I mean, yeah. players wise here, it's a bit difficult at uh, here. I mean. You've got Cousins coming back from injury. Baker had a decent season, a decent season at Tampa. Will he will he continue will he continue that? Don't know, but I do feel like he's got games in him where yeah. he will he will perform, games where he won't perform the script, how it's gonna work. So I put in Baker Mayfield in here. Yeah, I think that's a really nice big Baker. <laughs> I, I would be shocked if Tampa don't bring back Baker. I think he's earned it, he deserves it. So yeah, yeah and he'll He'll be the guy going forward. He's, he's definitely, even if it's just a shorter deal that I get for him. I, I think, think it will be. I think he'll get an, you know, he's proved himself. It'll be a one or two year. He won't get anything massive. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It's, as, it's, I've seen it as well in, in many different leagues, having that third QB that is still a solid QB every week or at least put up some decent points is 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 is, is, some, is a need is a need now yeah and we've seen this year so many of them get injured right it's just like if if, if someone goes down if jordan Lowe goes down i'm not mad that i've got jared goff to come in anyway so yeah I, i'm pretty I, happy I'd there start jared goff over jordan Love. yeah yeah most weeks he could have <coughs> that. and even now even though i've got three really good quarterbacks even now i'm staring at kirk cousins going is he still the best value there like i'm not afraid to take these guys and because just because i draft this team doesn't mean this is the team i'm going to start this could be i take kirk cousins i see team four has got a lot of running backs but not a lot of quarterbacks and i and i use that to to trade right and i'm thinking about right in three months time or in a couple of months time whenever the season is about to start uh he's looking at aaron jones and he's looking at kirk cousins and I bet he's wishing he took Kirk Cousins instead of Aaron Jones. And I'm going to ask for Aaron Jones plus for Kirk Cousins. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm trying to think, think a couple of steps ahead here and try and get value. But just for the interest of the of the podcast, I'll I'll sway away from from Kirk Cousins and we'll maybe. I don't we'll think Team Four would have made the trade anyway, mate. Doesn't look like it anyway. Yeah, there. <laughs> um, I'm going to go back to the wide receiver well here. 
Or am I? It's pretty grim, lads. I'm not going to lie. It's um, <laughs> it, it doesn't look great. Uh, running back wise, Austin Eckler, Tony Pollard, Derek Henry, James Conner, Nick Chubb's an interesting one out of all of those. No, I, I'm I'm going to go Kirk Cousins. I, I it, if I was doing this draft, I would pick up Kirk Cousins here. I know it's four quarterbacks, but I can't say no to the value mm. that Kirk Cousins holds here. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go a little bit wilder with my next pick. I'm going to go wide receiver. I'm taking Jamison Williams out of Detroit Lions. I think Jamison Williams, former first-round pick, someone they traded up really high to go and get. They put quite a bit of capital into trading up to go get. I think we've seen nothing of him. I think he's only just getting healthy. I can't wait to see what they do with him next year. So I think it's worth it in, what, round number nine to go with someone like Jamison Williams. What do, you, what do you boys think? It's a gamble. It's a gamble. Yeah. I love him. I think he's. I think he's such a good player, and I think he just needs to get more integrated into that team and I just think he's just quality though yeah I think he'll he'll be more integrated even like Josh Wellens is gone right there's a couple of moving pieces there so yeah I think it's worth a gamble there uh that's back to yeah, you, no, I, you were you I, thinking I about think, him too um yeah a little bit he's definitely worthy of a, of a pick around here I mean with you picking him in pick nine yeah as I mean how many wide receivers wide receivers you got Alave Jackson Smith and Jigba, Godwin and James Williams. Essentially, yeah. Godwin or Williams will will be a solid, solid wide receiver three four. They yeah. don't know which one which way around. I think that's a great pick. I mean, yes, you didn't want to throw up over most of these players. Just doesn't look too healthy. They're either seriously injured or yeah. uh, or have had a serious injury. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I hope we can get that sorted. So for me, I'm no, no. I was going to double down, and then I pivoted. Um, mm. So I got the pivot back. A Nick Chubb at this particular point. So, so my pivot was off of uh, Jerome Ford in thinking. Ah. Um, could we start to see something? But yeah, with Chubb coming back, um, you, we won't. Yeah, I really like that. I was I was going to start thinking about hammering some running backs on the way back, and Nick Chubb was going to be going to be top of my list there. So I might have to reevaluate now. So that's 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 what we got. Oh, see, team team four, Will Levis, QB Will Levis. one, right? Wow, what, what, <laughs> QB what two? He's got Lamar Jackson, and he. Oh, does he have Lamar? Okay, that's yeah. not so bad. He has Lamar. Yeah, yeah, and Matthew Stafford and. Sean, we're we're back to you. What are you thinking? We're getting a bit a bit thin now, right? Right, it thin. is That's getting. Usually it where... is getting. Yeah. I I gotta fill my tight end spot. That's what I'm really looking at. But obviously, they're all a reach. But I don't love the quarterback throwing the ball. But I do love the tight end. Mm. I think he's class, and that Dallas got it. I think he's quality tight end. I think he can still do it, but. I don't have much faith in Hurts, I'm afraid. But yeah, I think Dot Goddard is a really, really strong tight end. It's just there's so many mouths to feed over there as well. Now it's kind of like, yeah, are we going to get a bit of a George Kittle situation where he's in the same thing where it's like there's too many mouths to feed, so you get boom and bust weeks? But he's such a good player for sure. Like, yeah, in the league. but could work out for you definitely. Dallas Goddard, not the worst tight end one. I hope so. I'm yeah. They say it's a lot of mouths to feed. They like to run the ball, but. I'd, if he's fully fit, he's a good go. He did have a bit of injury last season, didn't he? Yeah, he'd like a broken, he broke his arm or something like that. Yeah, that and then was he was, it, yeah. He was playing with a cast for a lot of the year, which obviously doesn't help his target share. So, yeah, hopefully we get to see more of old school Dallas Goddard coming yeah. into, into next year. And hey, look at that Austin Eckler going off the board, how far he's fallen. Round number nine wow. now compared to where he was last year. And Paul, we're back on to you for a double dip. What are you thinking after your. You took your, you know, Lord Voldemort and Deontay Johnson. Where, where are you going next? Well, I, I was going to go running back, but I may have, I may change now because I was going to go for James Conner. Mm, is, 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 is James Conner still under contract at the Cardinals next year? I think he's got one more year. Nice. That's a good pick then. I think he's going um, there, right? And I think, I think I'm going to take a massive risk and still fade the running back position because it's garbage. And I'm yeah. going to end up with garbage in my team. And I'm going to take... Garbage. 
Garbage. Um, did I say? Garbage. <laughs> um, so I'm going to take I'm going to take a wide receiver, somebody that I think has the potential to take over Ooh. as the wide receiver one in his team with a new scheme, a new QB, and everything like that. And that is Jahan Dotson. Yeah, okay. I like that pick there, Paul. I, 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 really, um... I really like him. And I'm also going to go for another tight end because I think there's still somebody there that is is a really, really good tight end and I think it goes to cr- shit after it. So uh, that's Evan Engram for the oh, Jacksonville Jaguars. Evan Engram is still there. That is incredible. I assumed he would have gone a while ago. Yeah, so did I. To be honest. Wow, that's a really good pick. I'd take Evan Ingram over Ferguson, Goddard, and George. I'd take Evan Ingram over George Kittle, to be perfectly honest. I, think I hate him. Really solid. You hate him? Yeah. Just me. Yeah. No. He, he, he ruined, my, what a, he ruined a fantasy league for me one year. <laughs> and I, um, I'm never picking him again. I don't care I, whether he was tight end one, he stays on the board. <laughs> no. <laughs> to, be, to be honest, George, <laughs> and, and he, he texted me the other day and he said he's not the biggest fan of you two either. So. I bet he's not after why yeah. he's on <laughs> <Not exactly. laughs> <laughs> the hate the hate I threw out there for him. I'm surprised that he, he hasn't come around and battered me. So you're good. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I think I had him in Dynasty for years while he was not doing it. And then as soon as I dropped him, someone like picked him up and he started to shine. So I was like, I hate that guy. I still, I still do have him in a start a dynasty where I picked him ages ago, and he's still in the team. So he stays, he stays because he's done all right. I just can't, can't bring myself to drop it, but I'll never pick him. I would draft him just to watch him sit on my bench for a whole season, <laughs> even if he's racking up fifty points. <laughs> Love it, mate. Right, um, I do like. I'm going to go wide receiver here. I don't know what's happening with Jerry Judy, so it won't be there. But I do like. The man with the dubs, Romeo Dunn. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't like Jerry Judy pick at all. It was, nah. mm, he's just never done it. Nah. Never done it. But when it, he went we, at the same time CeeDee Lamb kidding. went, and um, you look at the difference between CeeDee Lamb and Jerry Judy, and it's like pfft. he's probably gonna get a change of scenery though, and then he, people are gonna get excited, but you're right. He, he hasn't shown enough. He's got worse actually every year, which is really damning for him. He looks, it, it looks exactly. Like he's he's had worse different and worse. QBs, different coaches, different yeah. schemes, and he's been shit all of them. All of them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's not language. He was, and he was, he was great on tape as well. But just, yeah. Did you just say language? Worked, like, Sorry, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, Ian, we're we're back on to you now. After Michael Mayer comes off the board at tight end, so where, I love Michael Mayer. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like the, the got, yeah, okay, man. hang on, Max. Can we just talk about this? Sean, if you want to talk, no, about no, 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 you can't, carry on, you honestly. can't just shout, no. I love Michael Mayer, and then just... Yeah. Make... <laughs> you can like shout the, that. The anti Why? Evan, the anti-Evan Ingram. Like... <laughs> Michael Mayer is going to do what Evan Ingram didn't do for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just think he's quality. I've got a big, big fan of him. I just think he is quality. I think he's got elite size, elite speed. He can catch it. He looks kind of funny when he runns, which I kind of dig, because Isaiah Pacheco was like that. And that works for some people. <laughs> you run a bit funny, too, to be fair. I do, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be an interesting police. That'll be an interesting team to to build. It's like my team is consisted entirely of people with funny runs. Pick eleven for Raheem Sterling. He <laughs> 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 <T-rex arms. laughs> Love it. So, uh, Carry on. Ian, right, so he, a player with a funny run or a standard run? No, <laughs> um, the running motion for us, please. I, <laughs> oh, I've never been. Too... You pick someone. You pick someone with funny hands instead. Yeah. <laughs> you, pick, you pick the running back that plays in the wide receiver position. <laughs> feet for hands. That's funny. <laughs> Tell us my QJ then. Why, why have you gone for him? Just, just again. Last year. It, it, Hopefully, it was a blip. Yeah, I mean, I liked him coming in last year. To be fair. 
he didn't perform. I picked him in a few that just left him on the bench. Um, again, change of change of scenery there. I think is going to be a, a a positive for him. Yeah, yeah. I think I think he can't he can't do much worse. And exactly. Yeah. Mike Williams isn't there. Well, probably he's going to be injured. There's a whole kind of clear. The only the only thing is, I think they're going to take either Brock Bowers or Malik Neighbors, and that's going to be real interesting. That's going to be real interesting to see what what happens there. Brock, uh, Brock right, Bowers runs normal. He does. <laughs> won't be on my team. <laughs> he's got no place on my team. <laughs> right, lads. We are about to end the the tenth round here, so I think I'll make this last pick, and then we'll be. Will we move into our bonus rookie picks after this? Then what do we think? Ooh. Yeah, sounds Brock good. To Bowers, me. you're in my Let's team. Come on, boy. One hundred and one. <laughs> I've um, I've not picked a, I've not picked a running back yet. So, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll take someone who I think has. It's, this is definitely drafting overdrafting here, but I really liked what I seen out of Zamir White last year when he was playing in Las Vegas. If Josh Jacobs doesn't come back, I think he could be the starter there. I don't think there's anyone in this draft in particular that will threaten him too much. I think he's still going way too low in ADP wise. Like he could be a, a legit person that you can put into your starting lineups next year. So Samir White, way too early to take in the tenth round, probably, but I've seen him there. I thought he might be worth mentioning. So let's end our ten round startup draft there and let's talk some rookies, shall we? Okay, so we're only going to talk rookies here. So let's put that tab on here. Only rookies are available. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to take the first pick. Then we're going to go to Ian at number two. We're going to go to Sean at number three. And Paul's going to go at four. And then it'll just come right around to me again at number five. So in the Superflex, I'm not going to overcomplicate things at all. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take Caleb Williams. I don't think there's really... You know, a huge to be it right now. I suppose Marvin Harrison Jr. Is, is the only guy that I would consider taking over him. But in Superflex, at, at quarterback, unless I'm set a quarterback, or if it's a ten man league, I'm really thinking about Marvin Harrison Jr. But this is twelve. This is Superflex. I think I would take Caleb Williams nine times out of ten. On to you, Ian. The pick two. Are you delighted uh, that Marvin it, Harrison fell for you, or? Yeah, it was a one-two. It's a one-two punch there for me. So I mean, he's elite. Marvin Harris Jr., he is incredible. He'll change the face of whichever team draft him. And, you know, he's going to come into the league. He won't – it won't matter if he's got a poor QB or an elite QB. He's still going to put up numbers. So if if you would have gone Harrison, I'd have gone Williams. Yeah, I think for most drafts, I think that'll be, that'll be the one to – Maybe depending, as you say, ten team, whether it's super flex, whether it's not, depending on how, yeah. uh, those are going to be one two for me. Yeah, I think I think that's fairly locked in, and they're both like kind of in a tier, yeah. in a tier of their own, right? So, Sean, are you thinking the same there? Would you have? Would you have? Like, like, uh, do you think there was? Did you think there was any chance either? Of those oh two no, no, you at three? no, yeah. no way! I think if you're picking at number three, you know you're not getting them to. Yeah, unless someone's crazy. Like we got a few crazy people in some of our old school dynasty yeah. legs and yeah that would be fully possible but nah. <laughs> uh, it's fully possible for both of those not to go one and two as well yeah <laughs> <laughs> brock bowers would have gone 101 purely on nah, name nah, only yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we called one of our leagues the tight end league was because one dude picked tight ends <laughs> nah. i like the way you put it that man picked that dude. tight ends. <laughs> he did. He picked tight end. Now the big um, question is, how high will you be? Will you be taking Braylon Allen because he does have a bit of a funny run? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to, but now you said that. Uh, I'd take. Um, I would. I, do you know what? I want to take Brock Bowers, but I can't after this conversation. Um, you can. I'd, prob- you can, I'd you probably can. go. It's okay. I, you can. I don't know if I'm saying this name right. What was it? I don't know if I'm saying the name right. Rome Odunze. Is that how you say it? Odunze, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Ooh, that's, interesting. That's, that's who I'd go for. I think the guy's awesome. And I think they've got the combine this weekend, haven't we? Yeah. So the combine, nice. he's. I, is it neighbors and Harrison aren't there? Yeah, he's actually. Odunze, Odunze, 
Ben is actually in it, which is nice. Yeah, so once he shows what he can do, he's just going to skyrocket, I think. Yeah. I really like Romo Dunta. I think he's he's my wide receiver three currently, but yeah. I think he's the skills he has will translate really, really well, especially in the red zone. I wouldn't It wouldn't shock me at all if Romo Dunta at the end of next year is actually the wide receiver one in total points scored amongst yeah. rookies. That wouldn't shock me at all. Um, so yeah, I think he's a really good prospect. His contested catches are brilliant. Oh yeah, really, really strong. And hopefully he'll he'll link up with a quarterback kind of like Michael Panix Jr., where it's just people are just gonna throw him the ball and get him to go up and get it. That'll be that'll be awesome. Yeah. Uh, Paul, we're we're on to you then at pick number four. What are you thinking? Really, really easy pick for me. Um, yep, yep, yep. And that is uh, quarterback, Superflex League. Um, a lot of I've seen a lot of people starting to chat about him as he's somebody that potentially could rival Caleb Williams, and that is Drake May. A lot of people, Ooh. a lot of people loving Drake May at the moment. So I'm all over that. If I <laughs> if I could be at the 104 and Drake May falls to me in a super flex league, I am very very happy. Yeah, the the lazy comparison is he's he's Justin Herbert 2.0. It's it's not <laughs> exactly like. Apples to apples, it's more like apples to oranges here, but he's you can see it if you like if you look at him, he's got that big arm, he's a sneaky good athlete, he makes questionable decisions at times, but it can be coached, <laughs> it can be coached out of him. I think he's got enough raw talent there. So I can't wait to see what, what Drake May does. I think that's a great follow you at, at one four. And it leaves me with guys, I've got I've got a decision I on my hand. You're going. Because I've got arguably either the number one upside player in this entire draft or a guy that I just absolutely love and think is electric. So I'm really torn here. I'm going to stick to Daniel Jones. I'm going to stick to, <laughs> yeah, Matt Fryer. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to stick to my rankings. And my rankings currently have Jaden and Daniels ahead of Malik. Nice. So, I'm going but to... you're making my life easy for me and also annoying for me because yeah. if you didn't pick Daniels here, I, you know, I take neighbors here. It's either yeah. or for me, right? So, yeah. if you don't take him, and I'll, I'll explain what you can explain why you take him over neighbors, but man, they're two quality players again. They're both so good. Jaden Daniels has, in the same way, they're very different players. But in the same way last year, Paul, we, we spoke about it a lot. Anthony Richardson, this time last year, I was telling people, has the opportunity to be the number one point scorer in all the fantasy football. I'm telling you not. Jaden Daniels has that same opportunity. The guy is unbelievable. He had games in college last year where he had nearly 700 scrimmage yards. Are you fucking kidding me? 700 I, yards? I, like, I, that is insane. <laughs> I take uh, Daniels over Drake May personally. He's my he's on in my rankings. I've got he's my number two. I don't hate it at all. He's just there are loads of question marks. He takes like if you look up compilations aren't great, but if you look up a compilation of Gene Daniels getting hit, it is not pretty. He gets hit a lot and yeah. takes big hits too. But there's so much raw talent there and raw athleticism. We see what Justin <laughs> Fields can do running the ball. Jaden Daniels is a much better athlete than Justin Fields. He runs much better. So it's going to be real interesting to see what he can do at the next level. And Ian, yeah, major pick easy. You're going Malik Neighbors. Talk to me about him. I uh, mean, he is, uh, yeah, well, he's lightning quick, right? This is why I yeah. love this guy. He is rapid. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes he needs to maybe slow down a little bit <laughs> just just to allow <laughs> allow the, the ball to get to him in, a, in yeah. a different way. He is lightning quick. He is, and his what I like about him is his start, his standing speed is is just his acceleration is just incredible. Is you know, and then and then he gets to another level when he gets there. It's incredible, and um, he'll take the top off of any team that uh, he's against. I, I love it. Um, his quality, yeah, he's, quality player. He's, he can play so many different positions as well. Like he just. He just looks, bro. He looks ready to go in the NFL. I've got no same way as you talked about with Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't care where Malik Nibbers goes. I think he's going to go in there. He's going to make a bad quarterback look like a good quarterback. 
it's going to be it's going to be real nice looking at Malik Neighbors for sure. And gun to my head, I think he goes to the Chargers. I want to see that. I think that'll be awesome. Right, that that would just be cool. Him and Justin. <laughs> that that awesome. would be pretty sick. Yeah, that that's what I can see when I'm visualizing it. But we never know what Harbaugh's going to do. You'll probably take it to bed. Um, so, Sean, <laughs> what are you thinking? You're you're back on the clock. You got Roma Dunze with your first pick. What are you, where are you going next? It's a no-brainer. It's, you know, Kelsey 2.0 we're talking here. Yeah. It's, it's Again, you drafted just for his name. Brock Bowers. <laughs> like, say no more. I remember, actually, I sent, like, a screenshot to Ian and Paul, I think it was about two years ago, yeah, of, yeah. of Brock Bowers. And I said, watch out for this guy. He is going to be amazing. Yeah. And he is. He is just all that and more. So I feel like... In most of my um, dynasty leagues, I'm not getting him. I'm not in a position to get him in any way, and it kind of bums me out a bit. But So I will take him here on your show, Max. Nice. Yeah, Bowers is just... He's the biggest threat to Dalton Kincaid's tight end one crown. I can tell you that. Like, he is, <laughs> oh, he's, he's coming in hot. Like, he, I, I, I can't, he is, but he is. I mean, they kind of... I'm, I'm, afraid of here wherever he goes it, yeah. if he doesn't is he going to be is he going to be kelsey 2.0 or is he going to be pitts 2.0 is it is someone going to absolutely ruin his life and destroy him and just put him out to pasture because they don't care about the tight end position they're just taking the best player just, and then destroy just, him watch the steelers <laughs> trade up and get him Brock Bowers, you just say like, no, yeah, that'd be my, that'd be my only, go. yeah. He either could go one way or the other. I mean, we all love Pitts coming in, right? And he went there, he went, and he got, to, he's, he's just been destroyed. His his career got destroyed by a scheme, and could that happen to Bowers? And Joe New Smith. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so Hello, anyway. someone on this podcast famously called it a year before it happened. I have to say, I have to shout out Paul. Like you did, you did call that happening. Like, who said Carl Pitts was average? You did. And everyone, did. everyone mocked him. Everyone mocked him for keeping Travis Kelsey as a tight end one. Everyone was no with Pitts four firsts, four firsts, five seconds. Pat Mahomes yeah. just to get Carl Pitts from somebody. You know what I mean? Let's give up the house. <laughs> But here we are. Here nice. we are. Cal Pitts dropped on the board. So Brock Bowers yeah. just went off the box. Without, without taking, you know, without knowing where he's going, solid pick there, man. He is a, he yeah. is a freak. He is awesome. The he's only, so fast. For my, my mind would only change on him is wherever his landing spot is. That is the only reason it would change. He is incredible. Could you see I him going to the Chargers? Yeah, absolutely. He could also go there. He might be someone that Harbaugh might you take. Watch, you watch Jim. Just, Jim's just going to just trade up, and he's just going to take all of these players. I'm going to have that stack as well, then. I'm going to have <laughs> Justin Herbert oh, to yeah, Brock Bowers yeah. all day long. It's going to happen. Nice. <laughs> that's, that's a good point, actually. So, Bowers come off the... By the way, at one seven, Brock Bowers, how good is this class? You can get someone like yeah. that there. That is, that is pretty pretty awesome, right? So, I've, Sean, I think... Are we, are we back? No, Sean, you've just picked. Me. So, that means we're back to me. Paul. On you go, mate. But I feel, I feel like this... So do, you, do you remember the uh, 23 class? Everyone's like, the 23 class is amazing, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But you've got to sort of... Like the back end of round one, and then it went garbage. Mm -hmm. yeah. All like yeah. a lot of, yeah. and, I, and I feel like we're doing the same here. I think the first round is okay, but when you start getting to the back end, you get into that point where you're like, I don't feel great about this pick. This is this is the bit here for me. This is the this is the end of the elite players. Like yeah. after. Mm -hmm. Well, but this seven. is still a good, good tier of players. Yeah, still here, they, it's, like, yeah it's not I'm like not, a huge saying, drop off. I'm not saying there isn't a good tier of players, and and there are still players out there that I like and stuff like that. But I just feel like you've got to the point where if you could have got any one of them seven, you're really happy. Yeah. Now you're sort of like, eh. I hope it works out more than anything, you know. Um, yeah, agreed. But I, I am going to stick with the the wide receiver position for me, and um, my next wide receiver up is Troy Franklin. Um, Ooh, interesting, N another speed demon. Yeah, he's he's, he's quick. He's tall. Um, yeah. He's he's quite. I, I love the way that he can change direction really quickly, and he's quick on his toes. He he sort of keeps the the DBs guessing all the time, and 
I like Troy Franklin, and I think he could be a good wide receiver two somewhere. I'm not going to say he's a solid it's... wide receiver one, you know? The space he gets is like incredible, and you look at him running routes, you're like, it doesn't look special, but then there's like a chasm between him and and the cornerback somehow. I don't know. I don't quite know how he does it. I think he is light. I mean, fast. His speed is is yeah. is yeah. Change of pace speed is incredible. Yeah, yeah. I think he's a really really smooth operator. Like I think he's a great great player. I think you're right, Paul. Really nice complimentary wide receiver coming in there and being a number number two to somebody. Yeah. Potentially, potentially, Rasheed Rice. That would be that is my dream pick for the Kansas City Chiefs. Like I think Franklin might be oh, take it back too now? good. He might be too good to get there. You know, because the Chiefs are picking last again for the second year in a row. Um, Humble so brag, are they? Might, he might, I didn't, uh, I didn't watch it. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Mags, just pick up a nice cup of tea and just just sip a cup of tea while you say that. Uh, just... Mags, mate, I um, I work I work for a company who are owned by. The, the company's head office is in Kansas and they are Chiefs fans and it gets announced and it gets talked about. You know, oh, yeah, you beat the Ravens, you bastards. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, th- I think you should have a Taylor Swift picture by uh, Justin Ooh, Herbert. Though. I yeah. should have a Taylor Swift picture back there. I'm going to do that, you know. That's yeah. a great yeah. shout. I'm definitely doing that, actually, Paul. Thank you. That's a great Maybe, idea. maybe oh. see if you can get one with her boyfriend in as well. So. Yeah, Who's that? About it. Have, you, have anyone heard of him? Evan Ingram? <laughs> Not to me. Does <laughs> <laughs> your Watson? Does your Watson? I think... Uh, he misuses, not <laughs> Yeah. Nice. I think, lads, is that, well is that back to me, then? Am I back on? Yeah, man. Yep. Here? Yeah. On you, sir. Right, so we've got Brian Thomas Jr. here, who is... I mean, he has got all the tools needed, and we've got some of these some of these quarterbacks, Bo Nix, JJ McCarthy, who I mean, Bo Nix, I think will will continue to slide. I think his ADP is a little bit too high here. JJ McCarthy, he's been going up. I'm gonna actually, yeah, I'm gonna go with this guy. I've been really watching a little bit more of him. I think he's a real smooth operator. I think he's somebody that can come in and succeed in the NFL. A couple of years ago, people might have been worried about Xavier Worthy's size. I'm not worried about Xavier Worthy's size. We've seen I mean Paul wax lyrical about Tank Dell just, just about half an hour ago. So I'm not worried about the size of him. He is incredibly good right running. He's really, really good at catching the ball. He's gonna be able to get space open for somebody like for himself. I think Xavier Worthy is a good solid pick here. What do you boys think? Have you seen much of Xavier? Yeah. Yeah, man. You um Again, you're making my life easy in some ways because I'm 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 with him and my next pick, and yeah. it's yeah, he's good good pick there. I like it. And who was your who was your next pick? Was it was it Brian Thomas who I mentioned, or are you going somewhere else? No, um, uh, <laughs> no. <Brian. yeah. laughs> I feel like you could pick him anyway because you know just because of that. But um, um, it'd be a Donny, a Donny. Yeah, <laughs> I, can't believe, I don't think I've killed Paul. <laughs> you, you, you might have, mate. <laughs> Intrusive thoughts, mate. They kick in every now and again, <laughs> <laughs> and then they just come out, don't they, Sean? Yeah, yeah so it is. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, Don, a Donny Mitchell, a Donny. Mitchell, Donny. A Donny. <laughs> He is awesome. I've got a little, like, um, little... Did you just call him like Adonai? Adonai. Why did you go really brummy? Adonai? Adonai. Adonai. <laughs> is that how you say it? I don't know in Brummy? Adonai. 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 <laughs> you don't know someone called Michelle in Brummy? Adonai Michelle. Adonai, Adonai Michelle. <laughs> or if you're in Australia, somebody goes to the toilet... I love where's uh, the <laughs> oh, man. oh Paul. That's gentle uh, comedy there, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like uh, sure. Yeah, sorry, mate, you were saying you, I say I've got, I've got a little like note next to him in my rankings of just like that little emoji hand like that. Cause I just think he's just amazing. Ooh. Just yeah, the back I think end, the, back end of round so one. Uh, back end of uh, round one. Yeah. I like it. The absolute like antithesis of his teammate as well, Xavier Worthy, like he is not this like smooth operator getting open. He's this brute 
that will like just win in the yeah. air and like smash smash through you, which is which is a great one two punch for for Texas. So I think he's a real nice pick here at the back end of the first round. And now we're we're firing back to you, Sean. What are you thinking? Um, well, it's quite hard to pass on the likes of like Brian Thomas is a monster. Like he looks yeah, yeah. like everything complete. But I've got I've just got these other players that I just um not so like I don't know. After the combine, I think we'll get to learn a lot about these guys. Yeah, yeah. but. No, nah, I couldn't do it. I'd, I'd have to take Brian Thomas here. Yeah. Like, he's just too good. He is. Like, I, I've got a few players that I think could be like diamonds in the rough sort of thing, but like, take what you what you can see and what you know is good, isn't it? Yeah, Brian Thomas is just like, he has, I've said it a few times this show before, if you like, if you measure, put all the measurables of Brian Thomas and Marvin Harrison Jr. beside each other, it's the same player. Like, yeah, they're just they're just as fast. They probably have the same vertical. They probably have, will have the same forty time if they both run it. If not, Brian Thomas is a, a little bit faster. Like he, they have all the same measurables. It's just Marvin Harrison is just between the ears. He's so Marvin far Harrison. Ahead. Yeah, he's yeah. just it's yeah, he's so far ahead. Brain. Yeah, yeah, and like his footwork, I would say, is incredible. Whereas Brian Thomas, maybe a little bit more work to do there. But in terms of the raw athleticism. Not much difference there, so I think he's a real interesting piece of clay to be to be molded coming into the NFL. Can't wait to see where he yeah. goes as well. Like he's got everything in there. So Brian Thomas, great pick there, and still no running backs going off the board, which is real interesting about this class. Paul, are you gonna are you gonna break <laughs> that running shit. back curse? No, they're all shit. <laughs> nah, not all of them. There's one good one. So because he has a funny run, it's brilliant. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you know it's... the best. The best one I think is got a, is, is is his name again. It's not a run. <laughs> <laughs> Bucky, I love Bucky. Gotta love that Bucky name. Urban. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th- this to me, this there's quite a few players I'd like here. Um, yeah, I I'd like to go uh, JJ McCarthy. Um, I'd like to go Bucky. I'm sort of torn between that, you know, but based on the team that I've got and what I've drafted tonight, I think I'd go for Bucky here. Just nice. just because, like, you know, I, I've already got Drake May. I've already got Dak Prescott. I've got Anthony Richardson. I've got Lord Voldemort himself. Yeah. <gasps> you know, what? Why not? Why not take a punt with with a running back here? And I think I think Bucky is the best running back in this class. Now I don't think there is an elite running back in this class, but I think there are a lot of running backs that could be good value. I don't think yeah. we're sitting here looking at this draft class going, "Oh, there's a Bijan or a Brees Hall <clears throat> or Saquon or somebody like that." There's nobody at that level, but I think. You're running back twos. I think there's quite a few that could break into that sort of area and be a solid fantasy value. Yeah, Bucky Over could be like a Travis Etienne type of guy, like that kind of that kind of value you could get off him, right? That that's the kind of range I could see Bucky Irving defending. It's all it's all about landing spot for these running backs. But yeah, I think he's <laughs> no argument for me is him being the first running back coming off coming off the board. I've seen it. No, me I'm neither. Sure, I'm yeah. sure all the people will definitely do it like it's his name, his name alone. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I like I, I, his name alone. Yes, I made that joke, but I actually like him. He'd be my number one um, as well, Paul. I, I think he's he's quality, and see who invests that draft capital in him. I don't think it's just going to be you know landing spot's going to be key, but who's going to come and get him? Um, you know, I don't see him first, second round, uh, any running backs going really. Third round, maybe. See where they where teams invest. Yeah, there's maybe a potential for one to go. There's de- absolutely no chance anyone's going in the first round. <laughs> no. Second round, you might get teams going a bit crazy, but yeah, I think you're right. Day, day three, the third, the third round seems right to me, but I, I, you never know what they see. Some, some, <laughs> no, you're right. Make this atrocious picks all the time, so you never know what what's going to happen. So. Boys, that brings us to the end of, of that first round. We don't really have time to go through a full second round, but I will pitch it to you. Do you have any favorite sleeper rookies here that you're like, I think these are a good player to target and like later in like the later rounds, like round end of round two or round three or round four? Has anyone anyone got one that they want to chat about in particular? I got two names I'll chuck out. 
All right. So I got one running back, which is yep. Jalen Wright. Nice. Jalen Wright out of Tennessee. I think that guy is going to be awesome. He's a real good sleeper. Yep. Yep. And then the other one I like is uh, Jalen Polk, wide receiver out of Washington. Yep. He's my only one. I would have put out there too. Um, yeah, I like him. Yeah, he's, he's quality. There's also, what is it? Uh, Washington Roman Wilson. Roman Wilson? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, out of. He's out of Michigan, Roman Wilson. Michigan, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they, they do reckon that he said, like, he reckons he's going to run a sub 4 3 4 at the 4 yard um, dash. There is absolutely zero chance. I've watched him play. There's a zero chance. No. But that, <laughs> you see what I mean? He's. I'm intrigued like, to watch, but no. I would I would be shocked if he did that. Like I really would. So maybe he's got good track speed, maybe he's got good technique off the line. Yeah. But he does not show that on the field. He's not nah. someone that stands out as being a lightning quick player. But if he does that, he'll fly up boards, that's for that's for sure. So that'll be interesting. I love the pick of um Jalen Wright. I think if it yeah. wasn't for his in if it wasn't for his injury, he'd be right up there being spoken about with Bucky Irving and, and Jonathan Brooks and these other guys. Like he's a really, yeah. really good player. So he's he's someone that's been falling to the third round. I can tell you this much, he's gonna be my most owned dynasty rookie if he does. Because I'm gonna take him yeah. in the third round. Yeah. Like that's all right. Yeah, definitely. Paul, you got any rookie sleepers that you're thinking about? Uh, to be honest, mate, um, I haven't really gone too deep into my rookies yet. Yeah. Um, uh, my life is being taken over by running at the moment, so haven't really done much of that. But um, somebody that I do like and I do think that he's going to creep up boards a lot more is uh, Jonathan Brooks. Yeah. I think people are are sleeping on him a bit at the moment, and I think he's he's somebody that could be an early second round pick and somebody that I might have quite a few shares of, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to, for me, I'm going to keep beating the, the Cody Schrader drum. I mean, just dom- literally dominated in, dominated in the SEC and nobody seems to care, which is bizarre. <laughs> He's going in the fourth or fifth round at the minute. I don't, I don't understand. I really don't quite get it. So I, I'll take him in the fourth or fifth round all what day ab- long. What about Lad oh. McConkey? Sorry. Lad, the great, if we're talking names, <laughs> that's a good one like that is fantastic but i mean I, I'd he's love, someone I'd that I, see... I did like the value but I, it's going a bit too crazy for me now i see people taking yeah. the, end of the first round that's, that's they do. people rich. love him people love him ali cook the grill who's probably listening loves loves lad mcconkey, lad no McConkey. Lad. yeah he he's is, a bit of a lad himself though isn't he Ali is a lad, you're right. But yeah, Lad McConkey, not afraid to say it, best right runner in the class. Don't even think it's particularly close. Okay. I think he is He is an extremely good right runner, but he's missing some other parts of his game. I'm happy taking him in at the late, late second, but I just think he's going to be going too early for me. Well, we'll see. But yeah, I, I do like Lad McConkey. He was a sleeper, so, but his value has gone. He's going up, yeah. <laughs> Yes. I think it's more people start to dive into it, the more people now are focused. You know, the NFL's is done for the season. We start looking at rookies. You start looking at your dynasty. You start looking at who these people are. And people are talking about it. No one's talking about the Super Bowl anymore. And no one's talking about you know, the the road to the Super Bowl. It's yeah. Max. It, it's, Max is uh, I know Max is. Max is right. <laughs> it, it, so, so stock is going up now for, for players. And you know, all you need is is – Someone jumping on that hype train and yeah, stock rises. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And it's, it's, I mean, that I, I've said it a couple of times on the show before. This time last year, on average, all the guests of my show, I had about sort of 15 people on. Sean Tucker was 112 at this point last year. So, really? so much, so yeah, will change this weekend. So big, much is going to combine. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Anthony Richardson was going one eight, one nine. It's yeah. all changes after the combine, and of even course though it, it looks like we're we're trending towards players not doing it, it's still going to change. I think. Yeah, this this uh, three of the big ones are not throwing at the combine. If I'm right, I seen this morning. You know, it's, does that ruin? There's, they potentially ruin their 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 stock. There's no point, is there? They might. They're, all they're going to do is potentially hurt their stock. So they might as well go. That's, nah, that's it. That's that's what um, Marvin Harris Jr. said, wasn't it? It's, yeah. There's no you, point. You, you you've seen what I can do. I don't need to come here and show you that I can do this and I'm that good at it. 
And Max, I don't know if you remember, we we had Murph on the show where it was like it's just like a gym lesson, really. It's it is. You know what yeah. I mean? They turn up and you know, let's 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 see them do the forty in pads, and let's see if they yeah. run in a four three. And yeah, they've got a, we'll they've them, got a DB them, run in the side of them, you know, and let's, yeah, get them to catch a ball and run with it, like yeah. Yeah, yeah, they but they they love it, don't they? They love like running the drills, and like to them, it's like, oh, it's good hype, you know, it's good hype for the league and the draft. Also, it's, it's money, I'll, I'll money train this, for the league. Yeah, it is actually. I'll say this: you will guaranteed next week. You will see clips of quarterback Joe Milton doing very impressive things. Do not believe it. That is <laughs> I'm telling you right now. People are going to say he's the new Anthony Rich. He honestly, it's like he's Anthony not Richard. now. It's like Anthony Richard playing blindfolded. It really is. Like he is not <laughs> impressive. So don't don't fall for it, please. Um, so on that cheery note, boys, that brings us to to the end of the show. Lads, I've had an absolute brilliant time. This has been so well, thanks so for having us, bud. Yeah, thanks for having us, mate. This has been wicked. It's been great. I think <laughs> this has to be a bit of an annual tradition. I think we're gonna have to do yeah. yeah. Sounds like a plan. Maybe next time with a beer in hand as well. That could get really yeah. messy. Nah, man, I need to be stone cold sober to figure out this tech. <laughs> oh, nice, I tell you now, the amount of times we've done drafts on Zoom and Sean's got so shit faced he can't remember who he's picked. And and he, he went on to auto pick with about five to go. We're like, what have you to him? One of them. Then, Pass one of them just been in the I'm just, I'm just, I'm just getting a FaceTime. I'm just getting a FaceTime from him and he's in his kitchen, <laughs> sat down in his kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> let's get that let's get that camera next year I, ma- I made a point of squash <laughs> and i was like nah i've got to behave otherwise nice. i'll embarrass nice. you don't embarrass paul uk fft yeah yes uk and, fft and boys you gotta brat, you gotta come down two night london bender you know absolutely come down it's it's gonna be great fun it is every year and uh boys before we go i can't let you go paul you're on the marathon Tell us about that. What are you doing? Uh, so me and um, is he right underneath me there? I'm yeah. underneath. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So me, <laughs> me and my old brother Ian are both running the London Marathon this year. Um, we are doing it for the Sick Children Trust, which is a uh, charity that is very important to us and our family, um, and really, really stepped up for us in times of need. Um, we are raising money for this charity. Uh, if you go to my Twitter at Paul underscore picking, it is my pin post. It's a little bit of me talking about what we're doing, what we're doing it for and everything like that. And uh, there is a link there. So if anyone could donate anything, that would be absolutely amazing. And for people who don't know, the London Marathon is uh, one of the big ones in this country. It is 26.2 miles. I don't know what the Americans will think that is in their terms. Something in kilometers, bro. It's, it's like 42, 42 and a half kilometers or something like that, isn't it? Um, Gee whiz, so yeah, 42 kilometers? That's a long way, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's a big challenge. It's a big challenge for both of us. One of one of us is going to do it a lot quicker than the other. Um, but one of us is just hoping to, to start and finish. And the other one's just going to boss it and probably run with Kipchoge at the front or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, Paul. Uh, Max, you can um, you can guess which one of us uh, is just willing to finish it. Um, that's me. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Paul's Paul's a nail on the head there. We, I mean, you can see behind me is when this side uh, is yeah. when we did a, we did a bike ride about five years ago, uh, from five and a half years ago now, um, to raise money for the Sick Children's Trust. And I've kind of been itching to do something again, but kids come along and family life takes over, yeah. and uh, and you know having we had two kids close together, and it, yeah, yeah, I just didn't have that flexibility when we did the bike ride. Sean had just had um, not long had Joey, and it was yeah the. the the effort that has to go into training along with managing family life is just difficult. So I felt like now is the time I got the itch. Let's do something. 
if I'm going to ask people to donate money again, it can't be bike riding because I actually love bike riding. Hey, you're not really challenging yourself to do something you really enjoy. So I thought I hate I'll, I hate bike riding. And yeah, I you do so hate cool. bike riding. And then um, so yeah, the marathon was the uh, was I thought well, and my, we watched my cousin do it last year, and it kind of inspired me a little bit to to get involved. So I fortunately got a place in the London Marathon a little bit before Paul. So uh, I've had a little bit more time to get training. It was about eight weeks or something, Paul, eight, nine weeks of, 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 okay. of solid training. Um, I didn't get in the ballot, but yeah, got in the uh, in for uh, in for the charity. But for Paul and I, we have to raise a minimum of £2,000 each for the charity. And so that's no mean feat. So yeah, it's been a, so far we're, me and Paul smashed 15 miles on the weekend. Um, I took on uh, 14 miles. Because we haven't been without a bit of controversy in our training, have we, Paul? Um, some knee injuries. Uh, I got it. I had a car crash in the middle of it as well, and it's you just kind of just managing those whilst trying to find your 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 rhythm training. Um, so yeah, this weekend, Paul smashed for fifteen miles. Absolutely super proud of him for doing that. It's incredible. And then for me, I'd done fourteen miles. Uh, my goal is to finish this marathon, but uh, my uncle set uh, a bit of a, a family challenge, so I'm I'm doing my best to train as hard as I can now to try and uh, to try and beat it. What's the time to beat? Three fifty-seven, and that's quick for here. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, for me. That's that's quick. I mean, I was um, yeah, finishing. That's nine minute miles. So um, and and consistent nine minute miles. Okay. You got yeah, it, that easy. Because I'm well, the only the reason. Bet. Yeah, the only reason this is a bet is because Sean told him that my <laughs> brother will. Sean had a couple of beers and told him that my brother's going to smash you, mate. <laughs> we, we were sat in the pub and he was going, "Oh, I did it in three fifty-seven. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. I'm you know the greatest thing to walk the planet." And I just went, "My big brother's, my big brother's going to smoke that, mate." And that was it. <laughs> Challenge down, like so. <sighs> yeah, and and I'm, some I'm. I'm not a competitive person, and but then when things like that happen, I get really super competitive, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you, go, ah, ah, ah. and um, so yeah, I, you know, pleased with with this weekend's training was training at that pace and and training and and staying consistent with it. So I know Paul is feeling the same. We talk quite a lot about our training and what we're doing, but man, am I hungry all the time, all yeah. the time? It's ridiculous. <laughs> Have you have you ever run um, run a marathon or, or done any, any endurancey type thing, Max? Uh, I I did. So me and some people at work did like a marathon relay. So I took the biggest I took the biggest leg. It was like a ten and a half mile leg that I took. So and that was like long enough where I had to. I couldn't just rock up and run ten miles. It was like enough where I had to train for it. So oh, that definitely. was pretty tricky. I can I can only imagine how, how much more difficult the the training for over double that is so no i really take my hat off to, to you guys yeah. that is, i think the um, the mental part of it is and uh, I, I, I haven't asked paul this and i'm sure he, he probably relate is man i completed 14 miles i was so proud of myself and yet i gotta think shit i gotta go another 12 and yeah. and i've gotta i've gotta get my body fit again to go again for training next week so yes i'm proud of my achievement but how the hell am i gonna do another 12 Literally, literally had the same literally had the same feeling on Sunday. Finished 15 miles. <laughs> absolute euphoria. You know, you I felt like a king. I'd just done 15 miles. Reality sets in. Shit. Still got 11 miles left. Only two miles over halfway, you know? Crap. <laughs> that's <laughs> body's, a horrible body's, body's that's broken. A, that's you know a horrible I mean? way to look at it when you just go, yeah. oh, I'm just over halfway. But like you say, it's a huge achievement. Do not I will tell you the easiest run I did was the actual marathon run. Because you just get carried along, like you're just in the crowd and yeah, you just. People oh, have seen everyone keeps telling me this. If somebody doesn't yeah. pick me up and carry me down the road, <laughs> okay, not fucking feeling it, mate. Okay, yes, you can just... clap me, you can cheer me, and everything, but my legs are still got to keep moving. Body's broken. I'm looking just don't get overtaken by someone in like a scuba suit or something. Mate, right? That's, that's, that's my problem, okay, Max? That's my problem. I am uber competitive, okay? If I see some old woman in front of me, I'm like, I'm fucking having you, mate, okay? I'm having you. You are smoked. And I've got one of my mates. So one of my mates that I work with, um, he's going to track me and literally mm. watch my miles. And if he thinks I'm going too fast, he's going to text me, go, slow down, stop trying to overtake uh, me. Nice. Just, just nice. because he knows that I'm going to be like... 
Yeah. Two miles yeah. in. <laughs> no, you boys are going to absolutely smash it. Make sure make sure you're checking out that. I'm going to put that in the link. If you're watching YouTube, it's going to be the first line you see on the link. So make sure make sure you're checking it out on your... Appreciate on your that, Max. And uh, if Paul and I, uh, we will be getting around to it, um, but we will do a bit of a... a, a a podcast like this where we're going to talk about yeah. the charity and why it means so much to us and what it did for us and who they are and what they do. Um, but uh, as Paul says, running takes over life at the moment and uh, <laughs> running and recovery um, takes over <laughs> life at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely yeah, everybody appreciate it. listening, keep your eyes peeled for, for the podcast coming with, with the pickers very soon. And hopefully you enjoyed this a little bit of both worlds. We've got a bit of a startup mock drop. We've got a bit of rookie chat as well. Hey, if you've, if you've not already leaving that like and that subscribe and all that good stuff, you know that we love it here. Hey, do me a favor. If you're listening on a podcast, which I know some of you do, go ahead and leave a little review on Spotify or Apple music. I don't think I've ever really asked for that. So go ahead and do that. That'd be, that'd be pretty sweet too. So from me, from all the pickets as well, Paul and Ian and Sean, thank you so much for listening. And remember for anything dynasty, you need to know, keep it locked on the certified inferno. We'll see you next time. Bye.